Rusta was 2 through 2 here, coming from uh, necessary isolation with uh, safety specs on because uh, this is uh, this video introduces my latest article in, in the June airgun world which is the Tanfoglio race gun based on the Czech CZ75. Um, oh, to explain my t-shirt, Florence Nightingale before she was known as the Lady of the Lamp was known as the Lady with the Hammer because she would go around um, hospital wards during the Crimean War banging on doors with a hammer, breaking into stores and getting the necessary uh, health kit she needs to, to save people's lives. Politicians take note. Anyway, so this is the Tanfoglio race gun. I've got no BBs in here, but I've just loaded some CO2. So if my lovely lady can ignore this noise for a second. So that's ready to go. And I'm going to hold down the slide release um, just through a uh, Talk you through this for a second. Quite, quite a lot of fun in these things and uh, quick reloads as well. Hope you enjoy the video. Hi there everyone, Russ Douglas 2 to 2 again. Uh, from the joyous confines of isolation, thanks to the coronavirus. Um, hope you're all staying safe out there. Please uh, stay isolated, don't go out shooting. Um, not unless you live on a farm, because uh, we all we all need to isolate to get flatten the curve and get out of this as soon as we can. The rabbits will still be there when we get out. I'm going to record this video now. I'm hoping to edit it today, get it online tonight, add a link to it to the, the article I'm going to submit to Terry for Airgun World, Terry Doe. Hi Terry and uh, Rosie and the team. Um, that's for the my contribution for the June issue and um, something a little bit different from my previous videos. Um, not just air pistols, race guns. We have before us four air pistols, an all plastic Gamo PT-80, and uh, this fella, the slide doesn't slide, it fl flips up and it takes little plastic eight shot magazines. So it's got a kind of a standard revolver action. Um, the, I thought, I'm sure a lot of you will know and love this one, the Walther CP88. This is a nickel finish pistol that again takes a little eight shot clip, this time alloy. <coughs> CO2 powered as well. Then we have, this is a, this is a race gun, but it's a you kind know, of a tactical looking one. This is the SIG X5 based on a SIG 226 with an additional under barrel um, Picatinny rail for accessories. It's got an adjustable rear sight, um, fixed foresight, um, uh, ambidextrous safety, and this is your classic, last classic race, race gun. Quite a hefty beast, and um, with 20 shot magazine that takes either um, pellets or BBs. Although with BBs, I only load 19. I always leave the top one empty because um, I use lead BBs and uh, not steel. There's a magnet in the tip that holds the steel BB in, in place, but that obviously doesn't work for the lead ones. So 19 in the clip, and it's got a, a fast load CO2 facility, which I'll show you in a minute. And then the subject of this month's article, the Tanfoglio race gun. Now this is a custom job, and it's modeled on Eric Graufel's IPSC winning pistol. This is the subject of this month's article. We have full free magazine, takes a standard 12 gram cartridge. Unfortunately, with a slow um, quarter inch Allen key for CO2 change. And also, unfortunately, it's got the, uh, uh, if I get it on my fingernail, it's, it's got a retractable sprung follower um, and that takes the BBs. So this is the main subject of um, this month, the my next article. You'll see I've got a red dot, red dot sight in place on this, uh, which is uh, an OEG or occluded eye gun sight. Uh, you can keep both eyes open. And when the red dot's on, you've got either a dot or a cross here visible. And you can uh, use this fellow once it's zeroed with both eyes open. Um, and it's basically the idea is rapid target ac acquisition. Because this is a race gun after all, so it's for high speed competitions. 
Now this is the air gun version, um, but it still has um, ambidextrous safety catch. These big lugs here. Uh, see fire, red dot for fire, obscured for safe. It's got the cocking lever, and this has got a, a little cutaway so to clear the uh, scope rail, the raised sight rail. Via the Allen bolt, you might be able to see in there, um, this cocking lever is ambidextrous, it can be put on either side. There are serrations on either side of the rear of the slide and also the front, but basically for speed, this is a race gun, for speed you cock it back, you've got a working uh, slide release. Another nice feature is the ejection port is, uh, is, is uh, realistic, it's open. See right through to where the magazine will hold the BBs. And another nice detail, because this pistol is based on the CZ-75, it's got the Browning cam lock inside in the firearm version. And when you, if I just drop the hammer a second, when you cock this fella back, if you look at the muzzle brake, the barrel angles downwards ever so slightly, which is very, very realistic. A nice touch on an air pistol to have that kind of realism. Um, it's not feel strippable. Um, I'm not going to mess about with drifting out sort of uh, push pins and such like to strip it down. Um, it's all metal. There's knurling at the rear of the frame and the front. We've got a beaver tail for your hand here. And this has got a nice satisfying kick that you'll see shortly when I demonstrate this with my chrono. I've got the chrono set up here facing one of my carpet tile backstops, which is this big rectangular fella. I've got the Air Crony from Blackpool Air Rifles, the R2A Crony as a backup, also from Blackpool Air Rifles. I'm going to video what the Crony records um, via this sort of cheapo um, fake GoPro type thing. And I've got a lamp here in case it's needed to illuminate the display. So I should also mention that because the real version, the firearm version, has um, has got a, a muzzle brake here with ports to vent gases and control the recoil. Um, this, is, uh, this is realistic, although there's obviously very little recoil uh, on this fella, despite the realistic blowback. The blowback does use a fair bit of gas, so you're not going to get award-winning shot count from, uh, from this pistol, um, but you're going to get a lot of realism. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of nice features. It's 1.3 kilos of air pistol, which is, is fantastic. It's got a big grip, and I should mention, the big grip leads me on to another plus. Big grip, the reason for that is the large magazine in the firearm version. And that means when we go down to the um, air pistol version, 12 gram fits in here. And that leaves a large expansion chamber. And we've got the, the valve here at the back, which the hammer strikes um, when it fires. And I believe, I'm going to record this, I'm hoping this is going to be the case on camera, but I believe this large expansion chamber is the reason you get very consistent results with this fella. As you're firing, the velocity will naturally sort of slowly decrease as the pressure in the 12 gram drops. In the past, when I've coroned this, this baby, it's been very, very, very consistent, dropping literally by one or two, three, or three feet per second per shot as the pressure drops, which is a, a very nice feature. I'm hoping to show you this shortly. Obviously, an essential with the BB guns is um, safety glasses. And uh, I do only use copper-coated lead BBs, in this case, 7.4 grain uh, Webley Accu BBs to uh, reduce the risk of ricochets when I'm using this outdoor at Gark, at Grampian Air Rifle Club in the outdoor range. But even then, safety glasses are an essential item. And I'll just point out, these two are pellet only. The SIG X5, very nicely, um, is kind of dual fuel. Um, if you eject the magazine, pop the back open, you've got a 20 shot belt. It's reduced from the 30 shot belt of um, the early SIG P320s um, for, for realism and also to, make the, to reduce the effort of the trigger pull and make the action smoother. Um, so this takes BBs or pellets, um, and over the chrono for these tests, I'll have to use pellets on these two, um, but to, for more of a direct comparison, 
um, I'll use BBs on the uh, SIG X5 to compare to the Tanfoglio. So in addition to uh, filming the uh, chrono checks for you, um, I'll also turn the camera back around and I'll just show you how each of these fellas is gassed up. Um, none of them have been used for more than six months. Um, unfortunately, I, uh, I can't find my uh, little uh, tubes of pelgan oil. Normally I would put a few drops of pelgan oil in the, uh, the port where the uh, 12 gram goes with the gun angle downwards just to add a little bit of uh, lubrication to the innards of the valve but um, I'll have to skip that step today. Okay, so starting with the Gamo PT-80, this is the cheapest of the four pistols, and it's mostly plastic, although um, the barrel liner and a few, a few mechanical bits and bobs on the, in the innards are, uh, are metal. Um, as I said, you've got a working slide release, which sort of flips the slide up, and you pop um, plastic magazines over the spigot. Uh, un un unlike most Umarex pistols, these ones you put in with these little teeth facing downrange, which is unlike the Umarex magazines. Um, so you, you basically pop, once each mag's loaded, the pellets, the skirts face open towards the flat end of the magazine, you pop it in, click it shut. I'll just unload that, as there's no, it's not gassed up just yet. This pistol also has, there's no, the slide release is a dummy, as is the mag release, um, but uh, one nice feature, if I just cock the, uh, the hammer back for you, it's on, there's a red dot for fire, which is here, cover it for safe. Now, as I put it on, take it off safe, you should see there's a small lever in here. So when you've got it on safe, this actually blocks the hammer. So even if the hammer drops, um, it can't fire off a shot um, while it's on safe. Nice feature. Okay, to load the gamo, you just pull off the plastic grip plate. Once the grip plate's off, you've got a, a wing nut type screw here, which is very common. Okay, normally I would put a hold the pistol like so, and I would put a drop or two of pelgan oil down here over the piercing tip, and there's a pinkish hue I can see here, thanks to the dye in the pelgan oil. I'll skip that step today. Drop a 12 gram in. Right, quick, I can smell this, I can smell the um, CO2 there, and here there's two little tabs that fit into slots on the frame, and click, on goes the side plate. So if I just demonstrate it, I'll fire two shots, and you see, you see when I take the safety off, you'll see the hammer moves forward slightly. That's safe, fire. Okay, and I'll just fire two shots, two or three shots, which I would normally do after gassing up, um, just as the whole thing, to let the whole thing settle down. And again, just to confirm, no, no pellets loaded, and you can see right through the barrel. Right, so put it on back on safe, put that to one side. Next in the price range, we've got the classic Walther CP88. This is the satin finish, so it's sort of a, a brushed um, stainless steel finish with wooden side plates. And here, this is normally your um, magazine release, but on this the air pistol version, you press on the right hand side, and lo and behold, the grip plate flies off. So I'm going to pick up off the floor. Um, and here we release the base plate of what would be the magazine and back off the screw. Again, normally I would put a drop or two of pelgan oil in there while the pistol's held in this position. So once, once the, this 12 gram capsule's in place, take up the strain the thread and then pierce it click no hiss and then 
on goes the back on goes the grip plate. Put it onto fire again, checking there's nothing in, in the within it, and I fire three shots. Right, back on safe. Put it to one side. Onto the Sig X5, which is um, derived from the uh, Sig 226, just a longer version with a larger mag capacity. Um, we have a fake inactive um, field strip lever um, and an inactive slide release. But the, the safety catch is ambidextrous and that does work. Uh, it's on at the moment. Um, we've got an under barrel Picatinny rail for accessories and sights, uh, add on red dot sights, lasers, etc. And we've got a, a sprung adjustable rear sight. So slotted screw for elevation and a much smaller one here for windage. The clever thing with this, the SIG X5, is the gas change. Depress a small catch just underneath the beaver tail and it falls open. And this time there's nothing, nothing, there's no uh, screw to adjust. So you would know, I would normally, again, pop in a few drops of Pelgan oil to where the piercing nozzle is. But here you just drop in a 12 gram and then in a wanna, pierce it. Now, this being a single action race gun, um, I'll take the safety off, um, I'll take the mag out mag's empty anyway but I'll take the mag out so you can rack back the slide to uh, with limited movement actually to be honest uh, rack it back or you could thumb back the hammer you can fire three shots again just to get the gas going there's a there's a fairly long first stage the trigger and then yep yeah, no problem at all right I'll, I'll drop the hammer back very slowly, so it doesn't activate the, the, the uh, slide, and uh, put the safety on. Right, on to the main course, the Tanfoglio race gun. Okay, so I've got a quarter inch Allen key to uh, gas up the magazine. Oh, and let me just mention, by the way, the neighbours shouldn't be uh, too bothered by the, uh, the sound of a few... Uh, CO2 pistol shots because on both sides they know me and uh, I've got a police police officer living next door anyway and uh, he knows what I'm into. Okay, so for speed loads, I should mention by the way, for if this as this is a race gun, for speed loads in the field, you depress the mag release and it falls free easily. Plus, there's a flared mag well, which is all designed around slamming it in quickly, quick reloads on the hoof while doing race gunning. Um, all right, so put this to over here. All right, to load this fella, this is very, very common in UK um, air, CO2 powered air pistols. Basically, got a plastic plug, and you take your 12 gram. Again, again, I would normally put a drop of Pelgan oil here, in here over the piercing nipple. Drop it in. Like so. Guess it up and you'll hear the hiss. Oh, very faint, nice and tight. So that's now gassed up, which means, yes, I can no longer depress the, the valve here because there's, there's gas pressure within this uh, top part of the magazine. And just to demonstrate that it's, uh, it's gassed up, there's no BBs in, so the magazine locks back. And if what I'm gonna do here is that the safety's off and I'm gonna depress the slide release catch with my thumb just so it doesn't keep locking back with each shot. Okay. Now that's got a louder bark than the others that you can might be able to discern on the video. And uh, it's got quite a kick, it's very nice, very satisfying when you're shooting this fella. What an easy way to decock it is eject the magazine, safety off, pull the trigger, safety back on. Okay. Okay, so although I'm firing into one of my carpet tile backstops, safety glasses are going on now. 
Uh, all right, so um, don't need to use any fancy pellets because I'm not target shooting, I'm just doing chrono tests. So these are RWS Diablo Basics, 7.0 grain wad cutters, i.e. flatheads, classic lightweight lead air pellets, and we've got the Webley AccuBBs. Um, I've got a speed loader somewhere with these in with a, the pouring spout, but uh, I can I can hand load them for, for this morning for the uh, purposes of this video. These are 7.4 grain copper coated lead. You should check that your particular pistols won't jam with, with the copper coated lead. Um, they shouldn't and none of mine ever have, but I have heard of uh, some pistols preferring steel BBs, but just be aware of those ricochets. They ricochet like crazy. I should point out because the X5 blowback is a little bit more cosmetic and a little bit gentler than the Tanfoglio. Um, I have in the summer previously had a full three mags worth, which is 57 shots out of a, a single 12 gram bulb. Um, you're not likely to get that from the race gun. Um, it's just not quite as efficient and the blowback's a little bit, a little bit sharper, which uses a bit more gas. So I would reload the gas every time I reload the BBs. This is the fiddly bit. So you have a, a small follower here, There's a, a small hole here through which you insert the BBs. Don't be surprised if you lose a chunk out of your thumbnail while doing this. Okay. And I estimate, I believe there's 19 in here. That's, that, that rings a bell from previous testing. For the Gamo PT-80, as I said, you take the flat side of the magazine and pop pellets in head first. like so. So you end up with a flat back and a spiky front with the wad cutters showing. I'll just load up maybe three more magazines to give uh, a reasonable comparison with the, uh, the two race guns. And I will be washing my fingers, washing my hands thoroughly after this, uh, this little exercise. You've got to wash your hands anytime you handle lead pellets. So that's Four mags ready for the gamma. And uh, let's get the four mags for the Walther. Right, something I should mention at this point these two fellas. There was an Airgun World reader, Stuart Pollitt, if I remember rightly, who came up with a gadget his pellet bedder. So he's got eight little brass faux pellet heads here that prodders and a spindle with a base on it and basically you put each magazine over the spindle you put the bedder over the top and press them with a slight click and what you end up with is eight perfectly evenly bedded pellets for consistency and I did an article on this uh, in Airgun World um, over a year ago, and we, I did find, a couple of us did some tests, and I personally believe that this does, does help improve consistency and accuracy downrange, even using um, CO2 guns, which are notoriously inconsistent and therefore inaccurate. But uh, yeah, great idea, the pellet better. So I'll just bed these in just for the, while I've got it. Four Gamma mags, four Walther mags, all four pistols, they're all loaded up with gas now and uh, I'm going to put each of them one by one over the chrono, consistently firing and at the same speed. I'm always honest and I have found in my experience that this small Air crony does kind of eat batteries a little bit and also um, occasionally it won't register certain shots. So I've changed to the 
R2A crony. This one's um, Polish, uh, also from Blackpool Air Rifles. Let's uh, see if we can resume. I've, I've put fresh batteries in that, so let's uh, crack on where we left off. So let's just lock this down to seven. One gun, next mag. Going through the results, um, 1.2 foot pounds is about par for the course. I was pr pretty impressed with uh, how uh, consistent the, the, the feet per second was as it slowly dropped, as the, the power pressure dropped in the cartridge, and all from a, a relatively budget plastic uh, compact uh, CO2 pistol. Top marks gamo. Safety on. Next up is the Walther CP88. So I have four mags to go. Safety off. I'll use this in double ma double action mode again. Safety on. Let's see what this gave. All 32 shots registered. Slightly more power, 1.3 foot pounds. Oh, hell of a spread though. 246 feet per second spread. So, what I've done this time is I've raised the chrono slightly. So, I'll be firing into a different area of the carpet tile filled backstop um, with a SIG, Webley Aki BBs, copper coated lead BBs, slightly heavier, so. Back to 7.4 grains. So SIG X5, 19 chambers on the belt loaded with 7.4 grain Accu BBs. So in goes the magazine. Safety off. Rack the slide back and we'll see how this goes. So, fresh magazine, another 19 in. Should be 36 shots. Sorry, should be 38 shots. 37, not, one's not registered. A little bit less power. Hell of a spread. I believe we've got nine, 19 BBs here. So, in it goes. Rack it back. Safety off. Thank you. 
18 shots fired, the slide is locked back. So I'll eject the magazine, slide release, lower the hammer, and then safety on. So 18 shots, and that did look to me very consistent indeed. Let's see what the chrono says. 18 shots, 1.2 foot pounds. That's back up to the power of the pellet pistols. 268 average. Ah, that's, that's more like it. The maximum spread of 45, standard deviation of 14. What looks much better to me. One thing though I wanted to mention before I forgot, and this is the perfect video to mention it in, is uh, something I'd love to see in the future from a um, distributor or manufacturer like um, Boomerex would be something meaty like uh, the race gun. Um, still having quick change magazine, but if they brought out a range of Tanfoglios, um, Beretta 92s, Glocks, that sort of thing, Smith & Wesson Model 29 revolvers, all the classics, that had a best fitting style QD on the, on the heel. So you have a microbore hose down to a compact Coke can sized um, carbon fiber bottle on your belt, a little bit bigger than a Coke can maybe, size of a small thermos. Um, then these fellas could still be quick loaded, um, but they'd put out, well, this is my this is my wish list, uh, they'd put out between four and five foot pounds, so well below the six foot pound pistol limit in the UK, and uh, you'd be able to ring, properly ring steel plates out to sort of 20, 25 meters. There's no reason why not to, when there's the pistol's as well built as this, with a sort of a, a five inch or six inch barrel, um, that's what I'd like to see in the future available in the UK. Who knows if it'll happen or not? And there are some people out there who are horrified, oh, horrified at the thought of a, a microball hose coming out of the heel of the um, heel of the gun. But I don't get that at all. And uh, I'm more horrified at the fact that it takes ages to change the change the uh, CO2 and load the BBs. So uh, different strokes, different folks. Just throw that thought out there for you. So what's the upshot of all that testing then? Um, one thing is I'm gonna bin those uh, cheapo cameras because I had to redo the filming two days later of the chrono with, uh, with my mobile phone. I ain't using those little cameras again. I need to save up from, for a GoPro or two. Upshot is the Tanfoglio is great fun. It's uh, quite a dramatic uh, looking gun. It's um, nice and weighty in your hand, hell of a recoil. It's, it's just simply a lot of fun. I'd like to, I'll probably look into getting a spare mag for it, but Brian and I have both got identical pistols and uh, we find it's, it's great fun outdoors at Grampian Air Rifle Club, um, ringing the steel plates in the summer when it's uh, fine weather for CO2 pistols. And as you'll have seen from the chrono testing, sorry for any inconsistencies with the, the editing, but as the Tanfoglio's power-wise is up there almost as high as the, uh, the two pistols firing pellets, and it's and very very consistent so uh, top stuff so highly recommended if you're after a, a fun co2 pistol just don't forget your uh, safety glasses don't forget to stick to uh, copper coated lead bbs to avoid the dangerous ricochets glasses or not thanks for watching and uh, thanks for your patience if you watched right to the end um, i think the second half was more for the purists or those new interested in getting into co2 pistols and wondering how consistent they are so uh, you saw it here first. Feel free to uh, like, subscribe, and of course share it with others. And uh, I'll uh, be posting links to this video on the fo usual forums. Speak to you all there. Take care, stay safe, enjoy your shooting.